Hello, my name is Leo from TLab. Today I'll show you IEC Fusor and how it works. Fusor as a theory in science has already existed more than 60 years when scientists started to work on it. Up to now it's proved that fusion exists only on the stars and, and according to the majority of scientists wasn't until recently possible on Earth. There are more ways to make fusion and one of them is a thermonuclear fusion with hydrogen bomb. Among other projects there is a more intensive work on development of tokamak reactor within the project Torre Supra. There is used magnetic confinement method. There is created plasma and confined in the shape of a torus using magnetic field. In this project fusion is achieved but only for a very short time. During work of fusor, there is a very big amount of ionizing radiation neutrons. Despite this, nuclear fusion reaction in fusors is relatively safe because in the case of some accident, fusor is turned off and there isn't any danger anymore. Until now, fusion in technical processes on Earth has not been produced in amount to be stable process and to produce additional amount of energy. Fusor I'll present is called IEC Inertial Electrostatic Confinement Fusor that is initiated as an idea of scientist Philo T. Fansworth who also gave important contribution to the development of television. Fansworth worked on this idea with his colleague Robert Hirsch. Because of this, this fusor is also called Farnsworth Hirsch fusor. One of more interesting facts is that popular name of this fusor is also star in a jar. The main characteristic of this fusor is that particles are captured and accelerated with electrostatic method, method in fusor cathode in which is occurring fusion. Today such fusor isn't able to produce fusion process which will meet energy needs for running independent process neither to produce additional energy. The most common use of such fusor is a neutron generator. Existing of fusion process in this fusor can be proved by working with fuel which can produce neutrons. In most cases people who work with IEC fusor use DD deuterium-deuterium or more dangerous DT, deuterium-tritium reaction. This kind of fusion reaction doesn't require very high energies to produce fusion, so it is suitable to be used in small reactors and it is pretty easy to meet energy needs to start process of fusion. For example, in deuterium-tritium DT reaction is needed about 120 kV. Those reactions, depending on fuel that is used, can be done with only few tens of kilovolts. Unfortunately, today also a lot of scientists don't accept IEC fusor as a possible way of getting fusion. And now I'll present reactor and you'll see how this process works. Here's the chassis and on this side of chassis is a reactor vessel in the front of the vessel is a viewport with thick glass and negative pressure meter. You can also see blue hose that's used to bring a gas in the chamber. And also on this side is high voltage generator to use to generate high voltage for fuser. And behind the chassis is vacuum pump used to vacuum the chamber. Here you can see variac uh, that uh, it, um, it is used to uh, change, the, uh, change the voltage uh, in the process and here is safety switch to turn the whole process on and off. Here you can see low energy uh, scintillation probe and counter. Uh, if some uh, dangerous radiation uh, ionizing radiation appears, you'll see it on this reactor as additional movement of counter needle and you'll also hear a greater sound. Now we'll vacuum, we'll firstly vacuum the chamber 
So firstly put on the safety glasses. Now just a moment, we'll wait to, uh, to vacuum the chamber. In our case, we'll slowly increase voltage to 5 kV and you'll see plasma. We won't use any additional fuel and all possible reactions will be produced in high vacuum with particles of air gases, mostly nitrogen. In this case, possibility for fusion is very small and almost can't be proved. So this IEC fuser is called demo fuser. And despite the fact we don't use additional fuel and we won't get fusion reaction, there is chance to produce ionizing radiation. So we are working with low energy of 5 kV which produces ionizing radiation and does not exist reactor vessel. So now it is vacuumed the chamber and we can turn the process on. Now we'll slowly increase the voltage on the variac, so increase the voltage in the whole process. Now we have uh, enough voltage that is voltage about 5 kilovolts or 5000 volts and here you can see plasma in reactor vessel. Now we'll slowly decrease the voltage to the zero and turn off the, the process. I hope you learned something from this presentation. Thank you for watching. This plasma is so nice that I must show you again. Here it is.